This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. We're working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Hello, I'm Alma Angeles and welcome to ASEAN in Focus. We're coming to you live from Manila and Vietnam. Here's Eliana. Hello, Eliana. Vietnam Bureau, giving you the news in the dynamic ASEAN region. On today's headlines. Citizens of the Philippines wishing to enter Poland will be eligible to do so as the latter has opened its visa application center in Manila that is currently offering Shenzhen and long-stay national visa services. Earlier, we were able to interview His Excellency Jaroslaw Stepankovich, charged the affairs in the embassy of Poland and Manila and he discussed the opening of Poland's economy plus the bilateral relations between Philippines and Poland. And we learn more about Heidelberg and Wilhelmsfeld in Germany and how these places were an important part of the life of Dr. Jose Rizal, the Philippine national hero. Citizens of the Philippines wishing to enter Poland will be eligible to do so as the latter has opened its visa application center in Manila that is currently offering Shenzhen and long stay national visa services. The decision has been announced by VFS Global, an outsourcing and technology company that offers visa services worldwide while it has emphasized that the new center is expected to process nearly 12,000 visas a year, a majority of which are expected to be work visas, sending visainfo.com reports. Manila residents are now permitted to apply for Poland visas at the new VFS Global Visa Application Center, located at ground floor Echo Plaza Building, Don Chino Rosas Avenue, Makati City, and Metro Manila 1231, Philippines. According to Regional Group Chief Operating Officer at BFS Global, Jitan Ivas, Poland is becoming popular amongst the Philippines residents interested in working abroad. The VFS Global has emphasized that most Filipinos in Poland have chosen the Central European country in order to work there, while many of them are engaged in several industries, such as the food industry or banking and wellness sector. Due to the COVID-19 situation, all applicants must strictly follow the rules imposed by Poland's authorities to stop another increase in the number of COVID-19 infections. Customers must have a prior appointment in order to submit their applications at the Poland Visa Application Centers in Manila. Now, earlier we were able to talk to His Excellency Jaroslav Szypanskiewicz, the Charge d'Affaires in the Embassy of Poland in Manila, and he discussed the opening of Poland's economy plus many more. Let's take a look. You know, the, the, the data, when they are provided without the context, and uh, uh, they're sometimes, you know, misleading the mm -hmm. reader. Mm -hmm. because, because, in fact, you know, how you are um, tackling the issue of the COVID is um, at least uh, two factors. It means one, it's uh, how many people died, mm -hmm. how many people are in hospital, okay how many people uh, are infected, but it doesn't mean that they are symptomatic. Mm -hmm. 
they simply, most of them contribute to the herd immunity. Mm -hmm. And the next factor is uh, uh, progress in vaccination and release in the quarantine regime. And so uh, if you put everything inside, so quite uh, we are well, uh, so as you said, uh, the cases are dropping. Our um, uh, you know, healthcare system is uh, resisting in terms of the beds and availability for the sick people. We are uh, moving very strongly into the vaccination. I already got my vaccination in Poland. <laughs> in so, Poland? Oh, okay. Yes. So we are close to 30% of people vaccinated um, with the authorized in, po in Poland uh, vaccines. It means it's AstraZeneca, Johnson, Johnson and Johnson, uh, Moderna and Pfizer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, as the European Union, I think that we are quite good because the recent data from a few days ago for uh, one, 100 people, mm -hmm. there is uh, 115 vaccinated. It means that we are already going to the second bunch of vaccines. And according to the schem schematics in graphs, we will be, I would say, essentially vaccinated in, in August. So whole population. So we will get this so-called herd immunity as with the vaccination and with the people that uh, passed already COVID. It means that it's a practical end of the quarantine regime in Poland. So now, uh, mm. from the, I think in the beginning of this week, we released the quarantine. Uh, uh, so it means that you are not uh, carrying masks, only still in restaurants. So slowly everything is open, uh, shops, uh, theaters, so the, it, it, everything is going to normality. We are now, um, as a European Union, uh, uh, we are, people may almost freely travel uh, uh, with the, what we call the green passport. Yes. And uh, it's still, um, impl full implementation is still ongoing. Yes. Because if you are vaccinated, uh, I have QR code and I go to the you know airport, I just pass my QR code. It's mm -hmm. written, for example, in Spain. So they know that I am vaccinated, for example, with the Pfizer. Yes. And it means that I am not going to the quarantine into the quarantine as in the Philippines. <laughs> so this is slowly, we, we are getting out of the COVID. I, I am quite optimistic and the new data with the arrival, you know, massive arrival of the vaccines um, makes me optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, we, we shortly, in two, three months, uh, the, the story will be ended as a, you know, burden for ordinary people. Of course, there will be some COVID there and there, but mm -hmm. we will not face this case, this um, uh, phenomenon that we call the waves. Uh -huh. So uh, you, you mentioned about the green passport. Can you tell me more about this, sir? As we, with the uh, green passport, are we seeing a, a promising reopening in the coming weeks? And uh, what is the present status of uh, travel restrictions over there in uh, Poland? Border shutdowns, are they going to ease up a bit? It's, you, you know, from, from the people coming from the outside of the European Union, it's quite different. Mm -hmm. But at least we now implementing this green passport that is mainly this QR. Mm -hmm. The QR code is if you are, for example, um, mm -hmm. vaccinated with one shot, it's for a Johnson & Johnson and with a two shots with the uh, rest of the vaccine that are authorized in, um, in, the, in your mm -hmm. country. 
So it means that you may freely travel. The problem is when the people are vaccinated with the, the vaccine that is not authorized, not by the European Union or by national um, authorities. Um, I think that you know what I mean. It's mainly it's concerns some uh, Sinovac and uh, Sputnik vaccines. Mm. That there is a lot of doubt about efficiency of this uh, vaccines and uh, a human reaction on uh, on these vaccines that may uh, vary uh, according to the individual persons. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of the obstacle. So uh, uh, the, the, <laughs> risk, the risk is that if someone is vaccinated with the unauthorized in Europe vaccines, he must pass through the whole quarantine. So this is, and of course, recognition of uh, uh, bilaterally uh, the, the, the green passes, it means the QR codes, Yes. It's a separate question. At it. Uh, so what I know, it's about how we manage in, internally in the in European Union and uh, um, uh, you know, having this body uh, as European Commission to coordinate the efforts of member states, it's helping to have unified mm -hmm. system because the, this institution is working how to unify the system and allow um, expression of the one of the most important uh, elements of the European Union, that it's free movement of people. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, talk about travel. Uh, on the side, airlines, particularly national carriers, have suffered losses due to uh, shutdowns and travel restrictions. May I ask, how the national carrier of Poland is coping? Yes, no, you know, it's, uh, the, this company are struggling. Of course, they are supported by the states and the European Commission mm -hmm. is giving the green light for a state aid to, the, to these companies. But um, as you see, of course, the companies were hard mm -hmm. by the COVID and uh, uh, and what we feel is an increase of price of the ticket. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's twice. And uh, in terms of the people to people, uh, you know, relation is very bad. Mm -hmm. So it means it's uh, hurting the tourism, and the tourism is very important for the Philippines as a pro perspective business um, uh, on the line uh, on. Uh, on the archipelago. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the one problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, this uh, it's not so, I would say, I don't know the detailed um, data, but um, um, uh, uh, airlines try to compensate it. Mm -hmm. And it means that they, they are taking, even if in terms of the people, flights are uh, sometimes empty. I, I fly such uh, flights that we were 10 people and the big Airbus, mm -hmm. but um, there was a cargo and mm -hmm. the prices of the cargo tripled. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the companies tried to com compensate to use the, the ordinary carrier as a cargo carrier mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and compensate the, the, the lost in terms of the number of people um, traveling and the frequency of flights. Mm -hmm. So this is an, another factor, but it, of course it, it has a bad effect in terms of the uh, rising the price of the different products that are uh, carried by the airplane, uh, airplanes. So this is the, for a consumer, negative. Uh, element. So there is, I would say that there is no winners in this in this story. So uh, yes, that's right. Uh, airlines have been transformed into most most airlines, yeah, have been transformed into cargo carriers. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, on the topic of business and trade trade relations between our two countries, if I'm if I'm uh, 
right? Poland's uh, Poland ex exports dairy products, mechanical equipment, paper here in the Philippines, while we export to Poland electronics. And we also have a growing um, Philippine furniture market over there. Has the pandemic uh, affected our trade relations? That uh, Yes, because the in international chains of cooperation uh, are partially broken or damaged. Mm -hmm. So there is a disturbance in the flow of the, even if something is produced in the Philippines to be exported to Poland, but some parts are coming from another countries mm -hmm. to construct it. So it means this whole chain of the uh, interdependence are shaking. So I am sure that it will, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it is affecting, but it will affect it. But generally to 2020, our, um, uh, our turnover, turnover balance with the Philippines tripled. So we were on the um, on the we were going up with everything. Uh, so the jump is very essential, and uh, I would say it's I'm I'm very let's say worried about the COVID effect because it it's already both economies and economies 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 of every country are hard by this. So I think that at least we will uh, have it this year frozen or smaller. I don't expect any kind uh, of the growth. In, in some uh, sectors, yes, with the airplanes and helicopters, it will increase because we are provided of the um, Black, Hawk, Black Hawk helicopters S-70. Mm. I uh, to the Filipino Air Forces, so this will flow because there is a priority, you know, from the for for the Filipinos to get this machine as uh, faster as is possible, you know, from Poland. And I think at the end of this month, five uh, helicopters will arrive in the big canton of, you know, your, so if you want to know how the helicopters are born, so they are not born in the factories, they are just going out from the belly of the big plane. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, and this um, birth ceremony, I think that usually is uh, happening in Clark. So <laughs> Clark <laughs> Airport. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, Poland and the Philippines has a uh, healthy cultural exchange. This, in terms of film, in terms of uh, books, paintings, how are our cultural relations during this pandemic? Do, do you have any, do you have any virtual alternative sections where we show our discuss the arts or uh, have our relations moved into zooming now? <laughs> You know, art is um, a cultural cooperation is something uh, um, uh, that is missing from my point uh, from the, in bilater bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are, uh, but it's not the, uh, uh, the level that I uh, want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, so we as the embassy, we, uh, now we are engaging the, the mainly chat with the, the students exchange. So uh, to have this exchange, because the, uh, the, the exchange of the students are uh, out of this quarantine system. It's a little bit the same situation as, as with the businessmen. So they may freely travel and there is no special obstacles, you know, to 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 have uh, uh, Filipino students in Poland, and so this we want to we want to go for. 
because it's not only uh, you know about students it's, uh, it's as well about knowing the countries it means something we are, we were not really present till the marcos decree about allow when he allows allowed um, uh, direct contacts in business mm. uh, uh, between both countries, because the problem was the Philippines were strongly anti-communist country, and we were under the, let's say, occupation of the communist Russia at that time. Mm -hmm. So the, the both blo blocks were, uh, you know, cut by the iron curtain. Yes. Iron curtain. So that there was, uh, I would say, the exchange and people-to-people -people contacts were very, very limited. So it means that uh, we still need to know each other, even if the Polish embassy operating is operating is from more than one year. So, but uh, tackling the issue of the image, it's uh, uh, quite uh, it's a complicated uh, operation. So the culture is playing important role. So we, we want to do it, we have in plans. Yes. Um, part of our operation now moved into the uh, Facebook, Twitter, the yes. ordinary uh, social um, communication media. Mm -hmm. And part of our activities is uh, inside uh, of the, or with the European Union, when we are going all together and we are presenting the, say, European culture. But, uh, you know, the, the using the word European culture is sometimes misleading because the Europe is a continent that is probably most diversified culturally. Of course, there are some elements and they are very important that are common for us because all all of us we pass the same uh, you know cultural philosophical uh, epochs so this epochs was lived differently in different countries but they they were there so we adhered from the very old time to the same values and we called them in european union shared values mm -hmm. so this European Union operations is about the shared values yes. and in the same time to show um, a difference, a different way, uh, I would say, via the culture, perceiving the reality, the shared values, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, uh, so it means that our movies or our paintings, we understand perfectly. We know what is behind because we know the shared values. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're amused by a, a different approach to these common values uh, from the different countries, European countries. But it's, uh, it's making our richness, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's sure. helping to develop uh, our own perspective mm -hmm. of the world and uh, our heritage. Let's uh, go to another topic now with regards to the Filipinos in Poland. How are they? How many Filipinos are there in Poland? Uh, not, not much. I think that my guess is that this year we will have the 3,000 okay. around something uh, because we had one hundred, uh, one thousand seven hundred, according to the statistics, something mm -hmm. around. I don't remember them very well, mm -hmm. but looking at the uh, volume of the visas that we deliver uh, in the consulate, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we will uh, deliver at, le at least um, one thousand visa. Uh, for the uh, Filipino uh, overseas workers. And according to um, previous calculations, it, we were calculating that it can go even to per year to 20,000, mm -hmm. but COVID stopped it. 
Mm. It means we are not facing uh, such a uh, huge uh, amount of people, uh, you know, storming the consulate uh, because of the COVID. And so the, 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 there is a less than, than we expected. Uh, mainly because the problem of traveling in the Philippines, so the people can't reach the consulate, frankly speaking, or um, and it's complicated. It's much more easy for the people or that are in Luzon or uh, in uh, Cebu, Mindanao, where you have uh, international airports and the connection is possible, you know, uh, without you know, big troubles. So, but uh, uh, we are prepared uh, for increase uh, of the application. Starting from the next month, month we open in Makati Visa Center. That is, they will be outsourcing a part of the operation with Visa, and it uh, and we are doing it to to face and to be prepared for. Uh, uh, you know, to flow huge amount uh, uh, visa applica applications to to the consulate. So, for this, we are prepared, and we know that will increase. Um, it's uh, from one part. It's uh, uh, there is a pressure inside of the Filipino society to go abroad because it's it was already before the COVID, but now COVID brought the people at home. Mm -hmm. So they don't, uh, with the massive return of uh, Filipino workers to, to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And and the second factor is that Poland is, uh, I think, one of the best countries in the Europe in terms of the economic development. So even with it, if our economy is slowing, but we are the best in the European Union in terms of the how we are economically we are tackling the issue of the COVID. It means that literally we have no unemployment, yes. and we need a working force. Uh, so uh, there is a, on this issue we have a, you know need from the Polish side and as well need from the Filipino side. So win-win solution. True. That's true. How long have you been here in the Philippines, sir? Three years. Three years? How has it been? <laughs> Are you enjoying it? <laughs> Even with the pandemic, how, how is it, Miss Paula? Well, you know, the first uh, two years, it was building the embassy. So there is a lot of, it was a huge challenge uh, to, to make it. Uh, the main problem are, uh, you know, standards that are uh, uh, building embassy. It's under the special standards. So we need some solution that uh, are accepted, but our higher standards. And this is this kind of the standards. Uh, the knowledge in the Philippines is not up. So we needed to work hard to to find a solution how to build it according to the standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, can I ask how, what are the similarities? Are there any similarities between, you know, Filipinos and uh, Polish uh, in, in our culture, in our attitudes or... You want Frank answer? Yes. Of course. <laughs> I, in some sense, I don't consider Fili the Philippines as a part of Asia. I, I, it's much more about Western culture. It's oh. ma much more the story of, uh, uh, you know, 300 years of the Spanish uh, covenant and 50 years of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so in my in, in my perception, uh, uh, the Filipinos are a kind of the I would say unique um, product of assimilation of a different cultures, and 
a kind of the Asiatic culture, and but little different in Thailand or in Vietnam because it's in here it's much more based on barangay culture, old barangay. So mm -hmm. the the small warlords controlling a part of the land and distributing the favors, you know, <laughs> and expecting a kind of the loyalty for the uh, for the favors given to the subjects. Mm -hmm. And it was this kind of the history. And of course, you have uh, this huge heritage uh, and the colonial past. Mm -hmm. Even if you are talking about the barangay, it was as well in, in one period, it's quite colonial. Mm -hmm. It yes. came from the southern invader, uh, but Asian. I would say with Europeans, it, was, uh, it is much more clear. And I think the still Filipinos are fighting with this heritage as well as with the American heritage. Mm -hmm. But even if you are speaking in English, it means <laughs> the, the American heritage, your books, your movies are in English <laughs> often. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so it's a part of uh, of the culture and with the Spanish culture, of course, um, the Catholicism is a part of the um, Filipino and Polish culture. Uh, you know very well that the John Paul II Polish pop is very popular in the Philippines, mm -hmm. very admired. Uh, he three times visited Philippines. It uh, means that it was important for him. One was a private visit. He only over stopped in Manila. Uh, but twice uh, he ran official visit in the Philippines with the biggest mass in the, let's say, in the history of the Christianity, 10, millions, 10 million people um, at Rizal Park. So it is something very, uh, you know, mm -hmm. ama amazing uh, because we in Poland, we have one million, you know, for a mass. You go to 10 millions, it means uh, the, uh, a, a, kind, a kind important uh, uh, difference and similarity. And second thing is that for this reason, the, uh, we big part of Poles and the bigger part of the Philippines, they consider the Christianity as a part of the national culture. It's, it's inside, I would say. And even if you are for or you are against for the some reason, it's always the point of reference. You're always, you know, rotating uh, around this issue. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the same is, I think in the Poland that's uh, making us and the Filipinos different for a man, from many countries that were previously Christians, but now they are considering Christianity a kind, uh, like a kind of the product in supermarket. So it's not a part of identity, but it's something to be grabbed or left, you know, so as a product of consumption. And it's treated a little bit like this, and from the legal point of view as well, uh, and in dead countries. So the, this Christian heritage is important because it's um, it's uh, uh, I think it ma it's making um, common um, ground for attitude to such issue as a death penalty. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, we will say no. I know that it's an issue now in the Philippines, probably. I hope that it will be not a movement, mm -hmm. especially in direction to introduction of the death penalty in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So for abortion, for some issues when the human life is involved, I think with the Philippines, with the Filipino society, we have the same approach. Uh, so it's, it's well, it's, as well about the dignity, you know, human dignity and uh, respect, tolerance, things like that, that are, uh, you know, root to be there. Mm -hmm. 
Indeed. Yes, you were also talking about the culture earlier of the Philippines. Uh, yes, we do have also a very uh, celebratory culture. We always have a reason to celebrate, be it exam, birthday, whatever, vacation. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was an exciting uh, culture and historical stride through the history of Poland and the Philippines. And I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Charjay, the fair. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, do you have any last message for our um, Filipino friends who are watching you right now? I think uh, on, only one. Uh, be proud, Filipino, of your national culture. Don't look for American culture as a, a future and say this is the old way, this is the parent to waves, and we don't want it, we want to be modern and so on. We already passed this period. And uh, so we are now, I think that we are proud. Fall culture, everything. Now it's a part. So as well embrace your um, history fully, not, not look only to a kind of the legendary, you know, story of Lapu Lap. It's not true. It's, um, it's blurring the whole history of the Philippines and the complex, complexity, complexity of uh, to be Filipino. So uh, study the history, try to understand your culture and be proud of it. Mm -hmm. You are unique. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to see you again and speak to you again, sir. Very, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Salamat. We'll be right back. And focus, we'll be back. This portion is brought to you by Security Bank. Factual. We have to defeat the virus everywhere. Timely information. Balanced, not only in the country, but also abroad. I'm certain of one thing. Interviews that people need to know. Watch Aguila Pilipinas. A one-hour newscast of reports coming from regional hubs in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Know the important updates in Asia in ASEAN in Focus. Track the latest stories in the provinces in Aguila, Provincia. Tune into Mata ng Aguila, the evening primetime news program of Net25. Balanced and objective, Mata ng Aguila covers national and international issues, tackles news on business, health, science, and technology, entertainment, sports and human interest features and current events and eagle news international On delivers the latest lines. global reports impartial accessible and up-to-date it brings to four ebc's rich international scope and access to valuable information streams catch these programs on net 25 you can also watch our news programs through eaglenews.ph and Eagle News Facebook page and YouTube channel. And we now know more about Heidelberg and Wilhelmsfeld in Germany and how these places were an important part of the life of Dr. Jose Rizal, the Philippine national hero. Wilhelmsfeld is where Rizal wrote the last chapters of his novel, novel Noli Metangere, from April to June 19, 1886. Heidelberg is a university town in Germany which was also close to the heart of our national hero. Both belong to the federal state of Baden-Württemberg.
EBC Europe Bureau's Malu Francisco and Marie Francisco Vare revisit these places and share to us videos and photos of these places. Take a look. The city of Heidelberg, southwest of Germany, is a top destination for people looking for inspiration. Thanks to the Heidelberg's romantic landscape and colorful history, Located in the state of Baden-Württemberg, Heidelberg is home to Germany's oldest university, noted for its excellent Augen Clinic or Eye Clinic. The national hero of the Philippines, Dr. Jose Rizal, trained in ophthalmology in the University Eye Clinic in 1886. From Heidelberg, if you would walk on the side of the Odenwald Mountain, just like what Dr. Jose Rizal had done, at a distance of around 15 kilometers, you'd reach the charming quiet village of Willemsfeld. A well-known health resort, Willemsfeld is the birthplace of the German-Philippine friendship, begun by Dr. Osarizal and Pastor Karl Ulmer of Willemsfeld. Step back in time, the year is 1886. From April to June, Rizal spent his vacation in Wilhelmsfeld upon the invitation of Pastor Ulmer. Rizal met Pastor Ulmer and his family while taking a walk in Heidelberg. In a town outside of Heidelberg in Wilhelmsfeld, you can go to Jose Rizal Park where you can find the statue of Jose Rizal which commemorates his stay in Wilhelmsfeld in Heidelberg in 1886. Also found are four figureheads of those who inspired him, doctors and other philosophers at the time. The bronze monument of Rizal was built by the German Philippine Society created by the renowned Filipino sculptor Anastasio Kaido. The park gives visitors a peek at Philippine history as a colony of Spain for almost 400 years from the 16th to the 19th centuries. Five, six, seven, and eight. These steps signify or symbolize the 7,000 and plus 100 islands of the Philippines. The Rizal Park could also be regarded as an opener to understanding true friendship and love of one's country. Let's meet the academic mentors and friends of Rizal in the park. Professor Dr. Otto Becker from the Eye Clinic of the University of Heidelberg. Here Rizal learned to use the newly invented instrument then for examining the interior of the eye, the ophthalmoscope. Rudolf Virchow, known as the father of modern pathology, the first to describe and name diseases such as leukemia, embolism, and thrombosis. Virchow saw the genius in Rizal, so he made Rizal a member of the Berlin Society for Anthropology, Ethnology, and Prehistory. And Rizal's friends, Pastor Karl Ulmer of Wilhelmsfeld, Rizal's host while on vacation. With the help of Pastor Ulmer, Rizal mastered the German language, which became an asset for him in meeting prominent scientists of Europe. Ferdinand Blumentritt, a respected researcher and expert in Philippine culture and languages, although he never set foot on the Philippines, Rizal and Blumentritt corresponded in German about education and the Philippine culture for a very long time. Ein sehr gebildeter, ein sehr hochstudierter Mann. Er hat die Bücher Noli Metangere und Elf Philippus Terismo geschrieben. Diese Bücher haben die Philippinen inspiriert, für die Unabhängigkeit des Landes zu kämpfen. And uh, instead of pushing for a bloody fight, which is barbaric, he fought with uh, diplomacy and dignity using pen and his wit as his greatest weapons. Rizal wrote the last chapters of Noli Mitangere in this house while guest of the Ulmer family. The book was in Spanish. Noli Mitangere is a historical novel depicting abuses by the friars and injustice under the Spanish colonial rule in the Philippines, published in Berlin in 1887. 
A gift of friendship between Germany and the Philippines is found in the Philippines today in the Luneta Park near the monument of Dr. Jose Rizal. The original water fountain that used to be in the yard of Pastor Ulmer's home in Willemsfeld. Imagine a 25-year-old Rizal drinking from the fountain. The German village of Willemsfeld gave the water fountain to the Philippines in 1964. More than 100 years have gone by since Dr. Rizal met Pastor Ulmer in Heidelberg and spent his vacation with the Ulmer family in Willemsfeld. The friendship that began in 1886 lives on until today. Every year in Rizal Park in Willemsfeld, Germany, Germans and Filipinos and their guests gather in the park to commemorate the birth and death anniversaries of Dr. Jose Rizal, the national hero of the Philippines. For Eagle News, Marilu Francisco with Marie Francisco Weir, we are one with 25. Half of the 40 million Pfizer BioNTech vaccines that the Philippine government secured will be used for children under the 12 to 15 age bracket. Vaccines are a national task force against COVID-19 chief implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said Sunday. Pfizer and the government signed on Saturday a supply agreement for 40 million doses of vaccines to be delivered by the third and fourth quarter of 2021. Once the expert panel gives a go signal and guidelines have been issued, Galvez said the government would start vaccinating those in the said age bracket. With the signing of the Pfizer supply deal, Galvez is confident that the country will be able to achieve its targeted 184 million doses of COVID-19 shots before the year ends. As of June 19, the country has received a total of 14 million. 205,870 doses of shots manufactured by Sinovac, Sputnik, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca, both through procurement and donations. A health official on Saturday said the Delta variant, first recognized in India, is 40 to 60 percent more transmissible than the Alpha variant that was detected in the United Kingdom. Department of Health Under Secretary Maria Rosario Verhera also noted that patients infected with the Delta variant are more prone to stay longer in hospitals compared to those who contracted the other variants. Let's take a look. Sorry. Uh, pero ngayon, sa nangyayari sa buong mundo with this Delta variant, ang kanilang naoobserbahan unang-una Sinabi na talaga that it is as 40 to 60 percent more transmissible than the UK variant. So ibig sabihin po yung sekrapi yung UK variant natin yung alpha variant na talagang 60 percent na siya more transmissible. On top of that, etong delta variant 60 percent more than the UK variant. Mabilis po talaga siyang magspread. Pangalawa yung iba naman hong na o observahan natin ano and based from articles mas prone ang patient na ma-ospital. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw yung ka-Delta variant, yung probability na ma-uospital ka ay mataas kesa compared to the other variants. Meron din pong sinasabi na meron hong iba na naka-uospital, mas nagiging may sakit ba yung tumatagal po ang kanilang pagkaka-uospital and yung kanilang mga inflammatory markers ay talagang mataas. So, ibig sabihin po talaga that it is causing severe infections as well. Katulad po ng sinabi ng WHO, we really we are seeing na ito po ay nagiging dominant in other countries like that of UK. Nagsabi na po sila na yung variants po na present sa kanilang bansa ngayon is almost 90% na are Delta variants. That's why they're having the surge. So ang ating pong pinapaalala lang sa ating local government units, katulad ng lagi namin sinasabi from the start, no matter what variants we have, kung gagawin po natin ng maayos yung ating PDITR response, atin pong ipapatupad ng maayos ang minimum public health standards at magpapabakuna po tayo kung eligible na tayo, ito po ang kaya po natin gawin para ma-prevent natin from having this variant being dominant here in the country.
On Friday, DOA Technical Advisory Group member Ed Salsalvana reported 13 Delta variant cases were detected in the country, all from returning Filipino travelers. Salvana said the government's immediate quarantine protocols for individuals entering the country helped in containing the virus. Let's watch this. Uh, well, sa ngayon yun sa Kraki, uh, 13 na 1, 3, 11, 3 ang naitatalang uh, cases ng um, uh, Delta variant sa Pilipinas. Uh, lahat po ito ay returning travelers. Uh, shampoo dyan yung uh, galing dun sa MV Athens Bridge. Apat dun po naging pasyente ko. Um, uh, and isa po ang namatay. Uh, mukhang na na iwasan naman natin yung pag-spread sa community for now, although closely monitor po ito talaga dahil nakakatakot po talaga ang pinapakita nitong Delta variant sa iba't ibang bansa. Well, yung sa ship naman, yung sa MV Athens Bridge, na-quarantine naman sila pagdating dito um, at uh, diretso sa ospital at uh, tinest naman po namin bago namin release na negative na po talaga yung kanilang PCR. Yung dun sa iba, uh, na naagapa naman po sa, ano, sa quarantine protocols natin, uh, yung mga taong uh, na nakitang may Delta variant at uh, so far, <laughs> fingers crossed po talaga, wala pang ibang nakikitang spread in the community. Well, itong nakikita natin ngayon, na pinapa, uh, uh, yung nakikita natin sa UK, sa US, sa China, sa Indonesia, uh, mukhang ang bilis po talaga kumalat nitong Delta variant. In fact, uh, new cases in the UK, 90% na po are Delta variant. At ang isang nakakabahala doon sa mga partially vaccinated na isang dose pa lang yung nakukuha nila, mukhang um, less po yung effect effectiveness. Uh, bagamat protective pa naman kung nakadalawang doses na. Uh, kaya importante po talaga always get the second dose. And ang nakikita rin po is uh, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga area sa, sa China of all places. Uh, kung sa nagsimula, ngayon nagkaroon sila ng outbreak uh, nitong Delta variant. Uh, minsan patong-patong po yung transmissions. May first generation, second generation, third generation transmission. Ang hirap-hirap po mag-contact trace. Uh, mas maraming mukhang mas malubha yung sakit. Uh, at akong nga po mismo yung sa aking experience dito sa apat na inalagaan ko, mukhang they really do uh, have uh, a chance to be uh, to have more severe disease. Ang tataas po nung mga markers ng pagmamaga, inflammation sa kanila. At yung isa nga po ay tuluyang namatay. Lockdown-weary Filipino digital nomads are moving to work near the beach and mountains as the lingering coronavirus pandemic triggers a remote work setup in shuttered tourist destinations. Let's watch this. I didn't realize how stressed out and anxious I was about the pandemic until I got here and started walking around on the beach with a mask on and realized that like nobody else is kind of doing it. For them to know that we're trying to target people in 20s and 30s, it's like probably the new face of like domestic tourism, maybe general tourism. I got to spend time being creative again, you know, thinking about what to do next. Like, I don't think we would, we would have gone to the 38 different AIs we would make if I were in my apartment in Makati, uh, worried about going outside, right? I think I would have been more focused about, like, um, how do I stay safe? Um, and it just gave me more time to breathe. always kind of wanting to live up somewhere close to the ocean but the pandemic kind of gave me a good reason to actually push through with those plans when you move out to the province you realize that you can actually build a life out here and I think for us our key takeaway is that um, moving out here just is such a big 
quality of life improvement at a fraction of the cost. Thank you, Eliana, for keeping me company today. Thank you, Alma. And that's the latest news in the ASEAN region. Stay updated about the ASEAN region. I'm Eliana Fates of Bashan from EBC Vietnam Bureau. We live in interesting times. And we'll see you back tomorrow. I'm Alma Angeles. We live in interesting times.